Aro, Shalom, Rastafarim. Greetings again, brothers and sisters. Ene Ras Yadinos Tefari Neng to the brothers and sisters, to the society, to those who are in the in the in the faith of the King of Kings and His Christ. My brothers and sisters, true brothers and sisters. I am Wendem Yado. Now, what we want to do is touch on a series of commentaries on some of the recent videos that we just posted over the last day or two or let's say the last couple of days. And we just post them as we receive them without any commentary, a little bit of um, um, purposeful um, renaming of the videos. Um, in order to connect it to the central themes and to to bring the truth to light, right? And some of these stories, I apologize if you just went into it. And some of them actually say that it had disturbing, had disturbing images. So hopefully you you got to see that and then just get to the disturbing images. Um, and um, I thought it necessary to comment and, and to touch on some of the subject matters contained therein. It's just that even as I think on it, it's like almost like one would say, where to begin? But the videos, I think maybe it's five, six or, or more videos, each of these separate sort of videos, they kind of go together. In, in other words, it's all parts of a vision. It's like if it was written word, this would be one scripture here, and this would be another scripture over here, and, you know, prophetically, they were all linked together. So I hope and pray that Abba, in the name of Yeshua, would open up your eyes and your, and your awareness so you can be sentient and conscious of that, you know what I'm saying, so you'll be able to see the vision. You can see the vision. Cause when, you, when you see the vision, you know, people um, without a vision, Perishes. That's the people who don't know or are not able to comprehend, well, what's really going on? What's the so-called big picture? But, but where do I and I fit into the big picture? And we're saying the big prophetic picture. Because if we don't know the big prophetic picture, then it becomes a big pathetic picture picture. You know what I'm saying? It becomes a, a pathetic situation. And it says, my people, my people perish. You know what I'm saying? My people perish because of, due to a lack of knowledge. You see, so we need that basic knowledge. We need, first of all, the knowledge of who we are. You know what I'm saying? And then we have to receive it or accept it. You know what I'm saying? Each of us, individual, each I has to accept and has to know the truth for themselves. Then when we speak about uniting and, and the and the unity and the unity and the ability to see eye to eye, we first of all must be within the birthright. That means born again. You know what I'm saying? We have to be born again and we got to recognize what does it mean in spirit and in truth. Not just as a religious thing. You're born again. Yes, I'm born again. I went to church and I raised my hand born again. No. There's much more to it than that. You understand? And lack of knowledge, the people perish. You understand? Yet with, with the vision and through the vision and, and in faith and recognizing what does faith really mean in the innermost of the inner, not just as a word that we say or if we say amen or me'amen, me'amen or me'amin in the Hebrew or the Ethiopic or hymenot, but what does it mean? What does the amen mean? Who is the Amen? And what, what role do we play? What is the work that we must do? I think, and I know that John chapter 6, verse 29, it lays it out very, very clearly that the work of God is to admit, is to, is to King James says believe. This is why we did from belief or be eve to Amen going from believe, which it was going from low degrees to high degrees. 
going from he coming from heaven to earth and from low degrees to high degrees. That's the sign of the cross. From heaven to earth, from low degrees to high degrees. But it means more than just the sign of the cross, in other words. Even the sign of the cross is deeper than just what people believe. You understand? Because they're still at those low degrees. They have not gone to those high degrees. And that makes all the difference in the world to what is going on in the world. And how are we able, both in prayer and working out our faith in, in real time, both in our faith, the spiritual aspect, because the faith is so important, my brothers and sisters, because this is what gives us the confidence or the ifidence. You understand? Not, not, not self-righteousness, but we have true righteousness. We recognize it's not because he has not chosen us as the once lost but now found beta Israel because we are the best of all peoples. I mean, that's very clear. That's in the word so forth and so on. Even the connection or the marriage or the covenant with holy Ethiopia that we know and we bear witness to, it's both scripturally and covered in the guess, and, and the reality is here, there, and everywhere, is not because even the Ethiopians or Queen of Sheba was of the best of all peoples, but because she sought wisdom. She recognized that there is more to this life. You understand? And when she heard, you understand, of the wisdom of Solomon, she, she made that journey. She, she came forward. You understand? And she learned and she heard and she saw and she accepted. And then she brought that back to her people. You understand? So we can say that that right there, the Queen of the South, is a good example of the gospel. Now, the Queen of the South, the Queen of Sheba, Negist Makeda, the link and the connection now with Ethiopia is overwhelmingly obvious. You know, there's still a debate among those who are just the uh, useless debaters about whether, you know, Queen of Sheba came from here or there, whether she's Ethiopian or that. So, and the evidence is, is staring them in the face. Let us not be forgetful hearers of the word. We already know what the word is. Now we have to become the doers of the deed. Now, in saying that, like I said, there's a couple of issues that the Holy Spirit shows me are all connected, you know what I'm saying, are all related. And there's even prophetic um, text and verse that touches each one of those videos that we put up. For example, um, some of them were about the, um, well, well, probably well, two of them are very, very dramatic because they're crimes, you know what I'm saying, against humanity. But they're really crimes against the mother of all living. They're crimes against women. They're crimes against Ethiopian women. They're crimes against our sisters, our daughters, our mothers, our wives. And th this, is, this is what is so shocking and, and dramatic about it. It does not have to be this way. But part of it also is the consequence of disobedience. Remember how we say as we here in the Western Hemisphere and the diaspora, you know, because this is a message for the diaspora. You understand? And also to comfort and console the diaspora that, yes, although we're seeing these things, it was already shown to us that there would be days like these. And not only was it shown that there would be days like these, but what do we need to do? Really, where do we need to place our faith and our state of mind? You understand? How are we viewing these things? Are we viewing these things? from the Holy Spirit and through the word of truth and the word of life, the reality, or are we caught up in the confusion of the confused or caught up in Babylon? So we really don't know how to take it, or we're taking it just emotionally. Because no doubt, seeing some of these videos, even um, we seeing it, it was, um, it was emotional. You know, you know, but you you have to recognize that even when we watch the video, we recognize that whatever happened had had already happened. All we're seeing is is the evidence. You understand? Know, However, there needs to be a prosecution. At, at least a lesson needs to be learned, and this is why we decided we'll share this with you all to to help to 
um, bulwark and back up and document and evidence some of the other points that we have been making concerning Israel's true Beta Israel, as well as those other converts, you'll send according to their measure of faith. As Christ said to the Syrian Phoenician woman, he said, be it unto you according to your faith. Because she had great faith. Even though Christ says, I'm not sent to y'all, you're not my people, she believed. She had faith. You understand? And that in itself is powerful. And she had faith in the truth, in the Moshiach. So even among those others who call themselves Jews, there are some of them who will be redeemed. You understand? To this truth, to the very truth that many of them have fought against. You understand? Revelation says so. But that's not for us to say, well, who is this? Is it this one or that one? No. We're to be about our Father's business. Now, in saying that, let us go over some of these, these videos. First of all, there was the child abuse and the predators um, um, amongst us. I was saying, I think, in our midst, but I think the actual title is Amongst Us, the Irritated genie of the Sufi um, and, and that uh, committed community um, produced this video, I think, in a series of other videos. And we seen it, and it was very, very informative. It was very well put together. I think we should all do our part to support um, the work with our prayers, with our goodwill, with finances, resources, um, putting out the word to others. There's a message about bootleggers, and I think that needs to be refined somewhat because the main thing is that the message has to get out there. You know, was, and in a time of war, of real war, of course, we would like to count the course, but when we're actively engaged in battle, we have to focus on the victory. You know what I'm saying? We have to focus on the victory. So with that being said, I wanted to first of all deal with the positive, the, the, the highest aspect. There's two particular videos. One is talking about Ethiopia, I think, and colonization. Let's see if we can... Um, bring that up right here and get the actual titles, Ethiopia um, and neo-colonialism um, stealing black diaspora's promised land. And that's basically talking about the Asians, many of the Asian nations, whether India or maybe Pakistan, I'm not too sure, you understand, but India and China and some of the Arab nations are leasing land, the most fertile and irritable. Now, 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 just check this out for a moment. Because the media ran propaganda that everybody in Ethiopia is starving and all the land is turned dry, even though it was only two particular provinces, uh, Tigre, uh, Tigray and um, Wolo, or Wolo, you know what I'm saying, that was really suffering this. And there's reasons behind it that have nothing to do with the misdeeds of the emperor or the fateful imperial government, but certain um, unscrupulous elements and individuals, you understand, that caused that situation, basically that brought shame to the imperial government of Haile Selassie and to our African Sion. But yet, the message was put out to everyone and the world and the whole world, especially by the BDC in particular, by um, Queen Lizzie, which is um, her government, as she says, you know, it's her government, so this is also a government agency, so therefore you are responsible, you understand? She is responsible as the head, the symbolic head of the government, even though they had her bloody diamond jubilee and then they claim say well no one really knows she does a lot of work but nobody knows what she does or what how to describe her job that's why we put up the vid to show you that it's basically a mystery but the scriptures discloses who is that woman that the whole world would wonder after and wander after so forth and so on so the media put out a bunch of propaganda concerning Ethiopia back in the 70s, 
You understand? And in particular, um, the point of the attack was against the sacred person of Kedus Abatachin, against Kedamawi Haile Selassie, and it was lies and slanders against the old man, against his august majesty, against the ancient of days. But nevertheless, when we look at the prophetic picture, we recognize that too had to come to pass because they've been making these wrong decisions against God and Christ from such a time to such a time. But now we're coming to the such a time when all of such and such is coming to an end. But there's a role and a responsibility that we must play. You see, if Babylon is able to keep us distracted and off-tracked, it, in a sense, it, it buys, quote, time, end quote. Because remember, this is why there was never put a particular day and an hour, so forth and so on, because prophecy does not work like that. You know what I'm saying? Father Bay says, if this and this and this, if you continue to do this and this and this, this is going to lead in your situation to this and this and this. But he's still saying to ones, you can make another choice. You can make your wills obedient to good influences, but no. Shaitan or Satan, he teaches his followers, his agents, his believers, and the majority of the world has been deceived into this, do what thou wilt. So they made a decision. And if they repent not, then judgment will relent not. And they're already seeing the signs of these judgments. You know, we just heard about this hail in Colorado. I don't know if any of you all are out in Colorado. Um, you know, Yah bless you in the name of Yeshua and protect you and everything out there. But some massive hail came down in Colorado, and they said that this storm was like, I think in more than five hours, it seemed like they said 12 hours, but it seemed like the storm, instead of just moving past, it kind of just lingered. You understand? It lingered on the mile high city, you know, this mile high city. And they showed kind of the, the, the graphic, the weatherman in New York, he showed this graphic of this cloud and the freezing layer. And it looked like a, a spaceship, in a sense. One of our brothers from other planets, you know, one of the, quote, angels, ships was up there. And, you know, not that you never know, but they're not going to tell you so. So you have to do your own study and seek it out and find the truth and know the truth for yourself. So the first vid that I want to touch on will be Ethiopia and the issue about neocolonialism. Neocolonialism. I think the video makes a very, very good Point. It's like a good presentation. It's a short, curt, it's to the point, and it gives us now a context to really seriously think about it. But those who are weak in faith, in, in the true faith, those who, who still are like um, little children and need to grow up, they probably see something like that and it makes them very, very depressed and upset. And it's like, it's, oh, it's all over. What can we do? So forth and so on. Listen. The word says that they would seek to part my land. They, they would seek to, let, let, me, let me show you this right here because it even connects the political situation. You know, because we're watching some of this, the, the, the news um, about what's going on in the Arab world, in the Arab world, and it's showing in Syria these massacres, and mainly it's women and children. So when you look at what, Gaddafi's uh, son's sick and demented wife did to um, that Ethiopian Mogzit or nanny, when you see the situation of the young Ethiopian girl who was kidnapped, most likely raped, but allegedly she committed suicide after being admitted to a hospital, they say she hung herself. I mean, how likely is that looking at the video? You know what I'm saying? Looking at the portion of the video. What's the full story about it? We need to know and we would like to know. But seeing that this is a situation that's going on, we must come to a point where we say and we mean what we say never again. Never again. Because this is all part of the curses for disobedience. And this also proves by virtue of itself and the whole historical connection with Armageddon in 1974. It kind of proves in itself 
what we've been saying about the covenant, the 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 al kidan. You understand? Know no, the Banai Barit, this holy covenant. You understand? Know we can trace it to Solomon and Sheba. We can trace it to, to Moses and Zipporah. You understand? Know I mean, we can even trace it before that, but just keeping it in the so-called biblical context. You, you see, so this is a deep relationship between the Hebrews and the Ethiopians, the faithful, the righteous Ethiopians. Make a note of that right there. You understand? Know because all political, quote, so-called, Ethiopians are not truly holy Ethiopians. It's like this is about Israel in the Bible. It says, you know, all Israel, you understand, all who are of Israel are not Israel. You understand, they might be of Israel, you understand, but they're not all Israel from God's perspective because he's the one that really set the bounds. You understand, one cannot transgress be beyond his bounds when he does not want it so. But he's allowing a lot of this mess that we see, and those who are inclined to blame God, because you have a lot of folks that say, oh, y'all who believe in God, where's your God? Oh, well, how come these things happen? God, the true God, the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he's not responsible for your madness and for the madness of humanity and for their insanity and their, their unwillingness and their unrepentantness and their disagreeableness. He's not responsible for that. You know, because a lot of folks come with these weak arguments, and many of you all have to grow, you understand, and really grow in faith so you have the confidence both to look at and study and seek to know these things and then to speak truth and then to defend the truth and then to act on the truth and to also act in cooperation with your brothers and sisters you understand, in the endeavors of the true new world order. And that new world order is the new world order of the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Of course, some folks hear this and they'll laugh it off. That's good that they laugh it off. You understand? I mean, it's good they laugh now. You know, they may not laugh later, but it's good if they laugh now. You know, at least they have some joy in this passing, so-called passing world, even at our expense. You know, was, see, you know, get too emotional. We get too emotional on a lot of these things because we haven't seen. The emotions come from our soul. What's the first thing that we are to do? You understand? Know we are to, in a sense, deny I and I self, deny our own way of looking at it in discipleship so we can learn of him. You understand? Know and we can conform ourselves to him. What does Christ show us that example of giving our soul you know what I'm saying? Giving God our soul, in a, in a sense of giving him our psychological state. That's why Psalm 23 says, and the Lord restore my soul, right? For his namesake, for his namesake, for Yeshua, namesake, for Jesus Christos' namesake, because that name is the password into our Father's house. We may say we know the Father, Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin. But we also know by the testimony of his imperial majesty to enter into that house, we must enter into it in and through the Son of God. And that name is Yeshua in the Hebrew and Jesus in the Amharic. And you know of it most likely as Jesus, or we better say as Rastafari, Jesus, Jesus Christ, or some brothers and sisters say Jesse Congo. Just to reemphasize that blackness and that Africanness, that the Antichrist and the and the perpetrators of counterfeit Christianity, that false image, you know what I'm saying, that they have put out. So, the BBC and the world began to believe that Ethiopia was a a starving, barren, rotten place full of war and flies and famine and all these sort of things. Even many Ethiopians, I would say many ones that probably were born over here or disconnected in exile over here, even began to believe those things. And you have to understand the psychological, you know, the psychological. When we say psychological, interpret it theologically as speaking and referring to the soul. So every time you hear psychological, psychological, or something dealing with the psyche, whatnot, understand that in a scriptural sense as referring to the soul. 
And if you start to do that, and, you, and when you start to study and read, it becomes very clearer. And you can see the medicine. You can see the, the, the prescription. You understand that the author and the finisher of our faith has, has written for us. Now, it's whether we want to be wise to salvation and work it out for ourselves. If we do not, then we have made our choice. We have not made our wills obedient to good influences. Instead, we could continue to do what we please you know what I'm saying? And not even fulfill what's right there in the Our Father prayer. Thy will be done. You understand? Thy kingdom come. You understand? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we're seeing these heavenly signs repeatedly. You know what I'm saying? In this particular time, too. You understand? Know In this particular dispensation. And we're seeing what's happening among the nations. We're seeing the economy. I mean, look at this whole economic thing. I wanted to do a vid separately, and some of the brothers and sisters um, who have a handle on this media technology, perhaps you can work in re-editing some of these in order to redistribute and represent, because we have to be about putting out the truth. And you can record your own. You understand even better. You understand? But see, ones have to get that confidence. You understand? Because a lot of times ones are thinking about, well, I don't, uh, you know, I don't know a whole lot. What do you know? Be a witness to what you really know that you know. You understand? And if you don't know it and seek to learn it, then first of all, pray about it and trust the God and Father of Jesus Christos, of Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior. I mean, we keep speaking about prayer and faith because that's the crux of it. Remember the disciples? They were trying to overcome demonic possession, you know, and this is happening even today. I mean, they call it psychologically and medically. They call it different things in Latin and stuff like that and maybe some Greek words. But even those Latin and Greek words, if you go back to the scriptures, the Latin and Greek Bible, you will find that Jesus Christos, he was healing those very phobias, those, those fears. You understand those fears. When one has fears, where do they go? You understand? They usually just go crazy because they don't want to go to Yeshua. You understand? They don't want to go to Ha Elohim, our Father, to Abba, to Abba, Abba Chin, in prayer and in trust and in confidence. And then look and ask, Holy Spirit, what do I need to do? Maybe there's something I need to do. You understand? And, and, and get to know this for themselves. It, it is so important because everything else, you have to remember that when we speak about the promised land, such as in the video title about the black diaspora's promised land, we have to first of all say, well, who promised it? Who promised it and to who? You understand? Scripturally, it's the Lord God of Israel, you understand, or the God of the Hebrews, who promised it, right, to Abraham, to Father Abraham, to the exalted Father, right? And... Now we know that through the lineage of, 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 of uh, Abraham, he had two sons, right? He had Ishmael, the progenitor of the Arab, and the original Arab were black Arabs. Now we have the black and the pale, the red Arabs, and so forth and so on. And that's a whole other issue which connects with um, some of what, what the videos that we posted in Gaddafi situation, the Bedouin if you go and check out the videos that we did about the Bedouin Arab, pointing out their own sacred scripture, even in their own Quran, you understand, it says to them, right, that the desert Harab, you understand, are the most severe concealers, you understand, uh, I think it's Kafiruna, you understand, they're the most conce severe concealers of the truth. You know, they know what's truth, but they conceal it. And the idea that you get even from their scriptures, like since they are desert dwellers, they kind of hide it. They kill it and they hide it in the sand. You understand? And it's very interesting when we look at what's going on in particular in the Ethiopia, you understand? And by extension, African, because a lot of the other peoples look at what's going on in Sudan. I don't know if you've been picking up on the Sudan, southern Sudan situation, Nubia how those peoples are being persecuted there. One, uh, the overt reason for their blackness, you understand, and for the fact that they are that land's rightful owner because the Sudanese 
Arabs or the, the northern Sudanese, their original place was in Mecca. Their original place was in Mecca. Now, a good movie to see is kind of long and everything like that. We're going to post some clips up about it. A good movie to see is Lawrence of Arabia. When you really now watch that movie with a, with a, with a clear eye and a conscience, and, and you, it's, like I said, it's a rather long movie, I think three or four hours or so. You understand? But you can watch it in parts. It has an intermission. You understand? But that's an that's a excellent movie to answer the question of who created the modern Arab world? Who created this particular political situation that is unraveling? All these situations are unraveling. They talk about the Arab Spring or the Arabs and freedom and democracy and the protests. Um, we see what has gone on in Egypt. They thought it would never, ever happen. You see what's oh, before Egypt, Tunisia. You understand? Know then we have Egypt, we have Libya, we have what's going on in Yemen. Now we have uh, Syria. There was also Bahrain, too. There was an earlier issue on Yeshi, Yeshima Bed, um, I forget her, her father's name, but she was um, a so called uh, maid who was hired. In other words, a lot of the Ethiopian women and girls um, have been lured. Um, to go to Arab countries, Islamic mainly, but pale red Arab countries in search of economics and, you know, like ones who come to America, almost like, you know, what has gone on from down south, blacks have gone to the north, we have the same thing from the Caribbean, ones who come to the mainland America, send back money and maybe go back or so forth and so on. So we see this cycle among our peoples and among other peoples. So, you know, a lot of folks get a little twisted. There's nothing wrong if one is seeking to do an honest day's labor, but what they don't recognize is that Ishmael is a wild man and his hand is against every man. And part of that really goes behind the whole, this whole terrorism, Islamic, Arab, Mohammedan thing is what the Bible, the Torah, has already witnessed concerning it. Now, it can have a positive and a negative. There can be a positive, you understand, effect, and there can be a negative effect, too. And it all depends, not even on them, but depends on us. You understand? It depends on whether we are preserving our birthright, whether we recognize our nationality. You understand? And we go on the record about these things and whether we are living within the covenant. You understand? Living within the covenant. And there's a spiritual part. The first part is that faith part. is about what goes on, that, that true new birth part that's within. You understand? That um, um, inward, you understand, conception, that inner conception. You understand that Rastafari, early Rastafari spoke of, which is theologically speaking, Tawahido, which is Tawahido. And we hope to um, print um, a book we've just about finished, and we just need to go over it, that's on that particular subject matter. Some of the faith base going to the very core of the Ethiopian and the Judeo-Christian faith. And we're going to the documents, not going to some of the theological arguments that are going on in, in, in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. After 1974, um, um, 1975, after Abuna Yisahak, you know, it's a very questionable matter, speaking of the Ethiopian church. However, we would not discourage our brothers and sisters, nor even ourselves, from attendance, you understand, from time to time. You understand, because they're still I and I people. But the truth that we have and that which we are being um, revealed, that's that's. What's, what's being revealed to us and what we're learning and growing in must be manifested. You understand? It's not like we're trying to hitch a ride. A lot of them think that we're trying to hitch a ride. We're not trying to hitch a ride. You understand? It's like when they say daddy's home. You understand? Or, or bra, bras come home. But we have to prepare. So there's various layers and levels of it. 
and it, with some of the reasoning we've been having with some of the brothers and sisters that we have more direct communication with, we kind of broke it down as there are some um, legal aspects, you know, the paperwork, our, our name, our nationality, correcting our status that we must become familiar with. But these are, that, that whole paperwork aspect, it connects with our faith base in the Holy Covenant. Because we cannot be in any other unequal yoke. You see what I'm saying? The unequal yoke being a nigger black colored on the 13th, 14th Amendment and denied in the pride of our nationality and therefore under some foreign national um, jurisdiction, some Anglo-European conspiracy. You understand? It's just totally unacceptable for us. If other nations or other black, dark-skinned people decide to choose that for themselves, then so be it. But for us, as the once lost but now found Beta Israel, we must come to the overstanding and acceptance as unacceptable. It's not, it's not negotiable. You understand the freedom, as it might say, the freedom of millions of people is not an, an, an object of, like, negotiation. You understand? It's, it's not up for negotiation. It's not a debatable point. We're not, we're not debating our true God-given inalienable rights, our natural rights. But we also must become um, um, knowledgeable about these things. And this requires that we put on our studying caps. You know what I'm saying? This requires that we really um, put our, our, our uh, mental, you understand? We have to get into the mental, the scriptures, the writing. We have to deal with these. And these things are easy. This is, the, this is the interesting. A lot of folks think, oh, man, it must be a lot. No, that's because the heathen and sheathen, the other nations, you understand, who exploit us, they make it seem like it's hard. Because they don't want us to know it for ourselves, so they make it seem like it all is all about. No, but it's some basic principles, you understand, and a lot of common sense. You know, when the Europeans talked about common sense, because that's when they recognized there was such a thing as common sense. You understand, it was one of the overflow matters of the black and the Beta Israel nobility, you know, um, which brought civilization to many European kingdoms. You know what I'm saying? In Europe, and thus the black blood connection, so forth and so on. But we're not going backward. You understand? We've been there, we've done that. We're not going backward. Prophetically, we must go forward. But in order to go forward, we must also learn and study and practice and perfect. So, Ethiopia and neocolonialism, if you recall, let's see if we have this over here. If you recall, we put out this article, and we're going to try to do a you know, come back to this issue. This hopefully will be a regular issue, and we hope that ones and ones are also able to um, weigh in, or here it goes right here, are able to weigh in on the matter and start to take some notes, because very soon, um, job willing, we hope to be able to um, start the essay program, you know, where we can really tighten up on our studies. You understand where ones will have certain you know, certain essays on certain subject matters, because we really have to see how well is our, our brothers and sisters learning and comprehending some of these issues, you know, saying, so that, so that, you know, this is the weakest um, point of a chain is, is that weak link, you understand? Um, so therefore, each of us have to be on, on, on a certain level. This is true equality in I and I Father's house, you understand? It's not for some of I and I to know it, and for others who are willing to learn it, to be denied the, the access and the privilege of learning it. But there's certain basic personal responsibility um, issues. We all got to take personal responsibilities. I and I could not come forward on a regular basis and, and present these teachings that ones can look into and scrutinize and can find out, oh, you said this and that, and I couldn't find this, and you said it was there and it wasn't there, and, you know, and find these errors with it. So we have to make sure that even what we are presenting is right. So we have to pray. We've got to meditate it, you know, and though there's many things we can come forward, even for this lecture right here, this, this uh, shiur of the shiurim, um, this lecture of the lectures, you know, um, we, we was thinking on many different parts of the case, so to speak, and we decided, well, 
let us just just get into it, just go forward. Because, you know, everywhere we looked, the Holy Spirit was illuminating our thought and showing us in there. And we said, you know what, we're going to have to share this with our brothers and sisters because that's, that's when it's distributable. That's when it's shareable, you understand? And in the family of Ionides Rastafari, that sharing for those who are willing to receive, that is truly caring. We're not speaking about what we are doing, but what you all also need to do. You know what I'm saying? So we can really build this ear, this atmosphere. Even though we are maybe miles and hundreds of miles away, you understand? First, let's get into the spirit, you understand? Then, whatever we need to do in the material and the temporal and the flesh can be done in righteousness. And, and we can be fully persuaded, you understand, that whatever we ask of him, you understand, it's according to his will. You understand, he will give. In fact, he is always ready to give. But our state of mind sometimes prevents us from receiving it because we're believing the lies coming to us from left field. You understand, coming to us from the world, so forth and so on. So this is the article right here. You remember we, we showed this a little while ago? I mean, not a little while ago. Recently, colonialism's back and not a moment too soon. This is a particular article that my late earthly father had, had photocopied from the New York Times magazine, and he was really excited to, to give this to me and said, this is what those, what those Europeans, you understand, are up to. He said, this is what those Europeans are up to. You might enjoy this a particular book, The Antiquities of the Black Race, that um, posthumously, uh, was able to be fully published. A portion of it was published in the Mohammed Speaks in the, in the 70s, and we were able to finally publish the whole thing and um, present a commentary and try to bring it together. So it's, it's there on our book site if you want to get some of my earthly father's writings. I'll say on a certain level of Ethiopian-ness or Ethiopian-net, I must say that it is him that kind of um, planted that seed, so to speak. But I had to, you know, follow up on it, but I give thanks for that planting of that seed. You know, it, it takes someone, whether family or, or others who are spiritual or like family, to put you on to the truth. But then you now have to work with that. You know, somebody give you a piece of land, you got to work with that. Thinking about Shashimani again, because we, as Ethiopian conscious African Americans and Africans in the West, even though we wasn't that generation that we might regard to be careless, the American, the Ethiopians abroad, not the careless ones, Ethiopians at home, because it's those who are careless at home and abroad. But we take in our part of the responsibility. It's easy to say, oh, look what you did to his majesty. But then we have to say, well, if we, our people over here wasn't distracted with so-called civil rights and for a lot of these other shammy, shammy, you understand, and cotton-picking nigger business, you know, we could have seen the big picture, you understand, and, and history would have been different. We had an opportunity, and we lost that opportunity. And much of the, the land that we were freely given, you understand, has also been taken back by locals and so forth and so on. However, the land and the true Lord or, the, or the, the true landlord is Jah. The true landlord is Jah. So that's why I keep saying we need to get our affairs properly in order, you understand, because it's really he who decides. He, it's he who gives. Or is he who lifts up to say takes away? Is he who gives, like puts down, and is he who lifts up? Is he who takes away? And is he who took the land from the previous tenants, speaking of Balui Kidan time, and gave it to our ancestors, the Beta Israel and, and the Hebrews in the time of Yasu, Yeshua, Yehoshua, or Joshua? And there's some very, very important um meditations to overstand from the book of Joshua. You understand? Because remember, Joshua was the one who led them into the land. 
Joshua also was there almost over this 40-year period of time, Joshua and Caleb. And when they finally entered the land, you understand, know they really had to fight and fight for the land back again. And I made a prophecy, not even a prophecy, but I said this prophetically in the prophetic spirit. I said that what happened in Joshua's time, seeing what happened to us from 67 to 2007, the Ethiopian millennium, the new, the, the, the new age, you understand? Um, and we see what happened, even from the Gladstone Robinson, the late elder story, and, and his testimony to us. It made me recognize that we, another sign of we being like the Beta Israel. It was another clear and obvious um, prophecy. We had the land there, but instead, as Psalm 51, the arraignment psalm says, we, we, we wanted to be partakers with thieves, with covetous people. In other words, what the Anglo-European white man, so-called British, and the rest of them who came over here did was a crime. Because they have gotten away with it, it seems like for 200 or 400 or so years, does not mean that heaven, the Shemayim, will always be silent to it. Yovas will always be silent to it. And besides that, I'm thinking about how, the, how Obama and the West, this is a Western policy that, that he obviously believes in with the gay thing and the AIDS, the way they want all of um, the, the Africans and, and the other nations, but especially Africans, to accept AIDS. I mean, I mean to uh, Freudian is is it to accept um, gays in order to get AIDS? No, <laughs> wait. They want them to accept gays in order to get aid. But, um, but but even when you look at that, either way, you know, Rastafari elder said, "Pick sense out of nonsense." You understand? Just think about just just that j just that title. It was in Ethiopia, Obama, like, accept, or, uh, accept gay, gay rights or, or no aid. I mean, or no aid, aid, AIDS. It's, you know what I mean? What, what's the difference, people? And a lot of the African nations, because it's a clash of civilizations for true, a lot of the African nations basically are refusing they, they're saying, get the bleep out of here with that. But then you, you, I stop, I, I think about this. And this is another subject matter I wanted to just make a brief word on the whole um, Africa gay and AIDS and I have to say the gays in order to get AIDS, AIDS right? Um, and um, if they don't, then the West, they're making this a policy like mother and daughter, Britain and Britain.